This is Dusty Jones here to talk about uh, some other trigonometric functions, uh, secant, tangent, cosecant, and cotangent, not necessarily in that order. First I want to start off with tangents and talk about their use in mathematics today before we get into the history of it. So today we know of the tangent as the ratio of opposite to adjacent sides in a right triangle. Uh, they're the toa in soka toa. So if we have this right triangle with an angle theta, the tangent of theta is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. We also see this ratio of, of these two things in the slope of a line, the rise over the run. If we look at this triangle here, the side opposite theta is the rise and the side adjacent angle to the theta is the run of the hypotenuse. And this is also connected to the tangent in the tangent line in calculus in that the slope of the tangent line of a function is the same as the tangent of the angle that's formed between the tangent line and the x-axis. The rise over the run of that line is the same as the tangent of that angle. The cotangent is the tangent of the complement of the angle, just as the cosine was the, t the sine of the complement of the angle. So here the cotangent of angle theta is the tangent of the complement of theta. In a right triangle that I have pictured here, theta and alpha are complementary because they sum to 90 degrees. And so the cotangent of theta is the same as the tangent of alpha. Uh, therefore, the cotangent of theta is the length of the side adjacent to theta divided by the length of the side opposite theta, or the run divided by the rise. Uh, this might seem strange to us, but the Egyptians had a function called the sect function uh, that was very similar to this cotangent. Tangent and cotangent ratios are actually used uh, to determine the heights of objects uh, that are unknown, but we, where we can measure the shadow. For example, if we want to know how tall this utility pole is, we can measure the length of the shadow of the utility pole and at the same time measure the length of a person's shadow, measure the height of the person, and uh, create an imaginary uh, triangle by uh, drawing in hypotenuses and having those angles be the same uh, because the sun is uh, striking those at the same angle and this, the person and the utility pole are standing upright, we've got two right triangles which are similar by angle-angle similarity. And then we end up finding or using these tangent or cotangent ratios to determine the height of the utility pole. Tangent and cotangent ratios were also used uh, to measure time on something like a sundial. Uh, if we have a, a gnomon uh, that's vertical, uh, sticking up out of the ground, um, the cotangent ratio was used because the length of the shadow divided by the length of the gnomon was the cotangent, or in general we could say the shadow was equal to the length of the gnomon times the cotangent. If the gnomon was uh, attached to a wall and therefore horizontal, uh, the sun hitting at the same angle as the example above, um, the tangent function was used because the shadow length divided by the gnomon length was the tangent of that angle, or the shadow was equal to the gnomon times the tangent length, or the tangent ratio. On a unit circle, if we have a radius of 1, that's what it means to be a unit circle, the radius is 1, and we have these two angles x and y that are complementary, if we want to find segments that have the length of tangent or cotangent, these segments are going to actually be tangent to the circle. That's kind of nice, the tangent and the cotangent are tangent to the circle. And what we do is first we extend the radius and then we draw in, uh, for the x, we draw in a segment that's tangent to the circle and makes a right angle uh, with that uh, leg of the angle. And where it meets the extended radius, uh, that's the tangent of x. We can do the same thing with y. We can draw in a line that is perpendicular, makes a right angle with the radius at y, and uh, meets the extended radius, and that is the tangent of y. 
It's also, since y is the complement of x, this segment is also the tangent of the complement of x, or since tangent of complement means cotangent, we could say that's the cotangent of x. Some relationships that we can see, uh, given that the radius is one here on this unit circle, we can prove that the tangent of x is actually equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. That's a very helpful identity. Uh, an identity is something that's always true. It's a very helpful thing to know. If we take a look at the picture, we can see that we've got two right triangles here, EAC and BAD, and they're similar by angle-angle similarity because uh, they both got right angles and they both got this angle x there. Therefore, we can set up a ratio of sides, uh, EC over AC, that's for this larger triangle, the vertical side divided by the horizontal side, is the same as BD divided by AD, uh, those corresponding sides in the other triangle. Now, EC was the tangent of x, and AC is the radius of the circle, which is 1. Uh, BD is the sine of x, and AD is the cosine of x. Uh, tangent of x divided by 1 is really just tangent of x, and so we've proved this relationship is true. Given a similar circle with a radius of 1, we can also prove that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, or cotangent of x equals 1 over tangent of x. If I draw in the tangent and cotangent of x, and I first notice that uh, FG is parallel to AC. And so that means we've got two parallel lines cut by this transversal AG, the extended radius. And that makes two angles CAE and FGA congruent. And therefore we've got a couple of right triangles, FGA and CAE, that are similar, uh, again because they're right triangles and they both have the angle of X there. Then we can set up a proportionality statement of FG over AF is equal to CA over EC. If you're wondering what order we go in, uh, once I've done FG, I look back at my proportionality uh, statement, or my triangle similarity statement, rather, and FG are the first two letters, and so CA are the first two letters there. Uh, therefore, FG is the cotangent of X, AF is the radius of the circle, 1, CA is the radius of the circle, 1, and EC is the tangent of x, and so we've proven uh, that reciprocal relationship there. A secant in calculus is a line that intersects a curve at two points, and we developed a definition for the derivative or the tangent of a function by looking at a limit of secants. A secant of a circle is a line that intersects a circle at two points, and so it passes through the circle. So here are several secant lines on this circle. In trigonometry, the secant function is based on the length of a portion of a secant line that lies on this extended radius we've got drawn here. And so if we look at the, we've got the tangent uh, of x, that line segment there, and the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle is the secant of x. You might guess, and you would be correct, that the cosecant is the secant of the complement of the angle. So here when we have x and y as complementary angles, and we're still on a unit circle radius of 1, uh, secant of x is the hypotenuse of the triangle that involves the tangent of x, and the secant of y is the hypotenuse of the triangle that involves the tangent of y. Uh, now since it's the secant of the complement of x, then we say it's the cosecant of x. Another relationship is the secant of x is the reciprocal of the cosine of x. And we can show that is um, true because we've got some right triangles here, EAC and BAD, similar by angle-angle similarity. 
uh, their angle angle similar because we've got right angles at D and C and then also um, they share the angle X and so EA over AC is equal to BA over AD and therefore the secant is equal to the reciprocal of the cosine. There are also some other things. We've got some right triangles living in this diagram and if we let the radius of the circle be 1 uh, we can prove these things that the sine of X when we square that uh, plus the square of the cosine of X equals 1 and I've got two others involving tangents, secants, cotangents and cosecants. Uh, you can prove these using the Pythagorean theorem and I strongly urge you to do so.